Hi, in this video, I'm going to be showing you everything about Twin Motion. Or we're going to start with uh, getting the models into Twin Motion itself, what the user interface is, how to use the software, um, using the library and adding a shared user library, creating and adjusting materials, setting up scenes, and producing still shots and video renderings. This is going to be quite a long series, so let's get started. The first step is going to be to get that Revit model into Twin Motion. We're also going to be working with SketchUp models as well. I downloaded a SketchUp model from the internet, um, so I'll be able to show you how that works. Uh, first step, let's jump into Revit. The first thing we want to do is create a 3D view that's called the Twin Motion. So these are all my sheets. Let's go to views. On the presentation here, we have already should have one created. Uh, under the presentation tab in our project browser, you can create a 3D view called Twin Motion, all caps. Everything in this view will now be exported to Twin Motion, so make sure that you have everything in this view that you want, nothing in this view that you don't. So this, you can turn off things like HVAC, for instance, if you wanted to. Um, if you don't need to see it for this specific rendering that you're doing, you can always add it in later if you want to. All right, so I do not have Twin Motion open. If this is your first time using Twin Motion, uh, you will have to start up Twin Motion by going here, typing Twin Motion right there, and starting that program up. Um, it takes that initial startup, but after you've already used it, and that initial startup period is gone, then we can just jump over to the View tab and hit Open in Twin Motion. So once we hit Open in Twin Motion, uh, this thing will run through and then a Twin Motion window should pop up. So we'll just give it a couple seconds and I'll be back. All right, Twin Motion popped up and it gives us this window. So if we already had this project created, you'd go to existing project and it would pop up a window that uh, allows you to navigate through Windows Explorer to your specific project. Uh, for this instance, we're just going to go with new project just to show you how it works. <clears throat> uh, we're going to go with collapse being, uh, make sure this opens, or options is open. We're going to make sure we keep hierarchy. And then all of these settings, I usually just keep them out of they are. So max UV precision checked, process all, um, set all values to PM default, enable substitution, all that stuff. All right, so it will be loading. It still takes a couple of seconds once the twin motion is up. The twin motion is controlled using a video game care or video game keyboards. That's W A S D to navigate, W to walk forward, A to go left, D to go right, S to go backwards, Q to go up, and then E to go down. And then we use the right click to look around. This thing's still loading, so give it a couple seconds here. So all of the commands that I was just talking about are right here at the top. Um, one of the more important commands that I overlooked for a little bit was speed. You want to be able to navigate fast or slow depending on what scale of rendering that you're working on. If you only want to move a little bit, you press the one button and then start moving around. If you need to go across your entire model, you press five or six and you can speed your body, speed your uh, drone up is what they call it. So after this direct link processes, we should be able to look around now and there's our building. So first thing that you might notice is the building is floating in the air. That is because our zero point, if you go into Revit, our elevation markers right here. This is at 100 feet. So level one is always at 100 feet for our, our models. Uh, what we can do is drop this down 100 feet. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we're not in meters. Uh, I believe this is going to be in meters, so we're going to go into Edit, Preferences. Also, you could use Control P. Drop down to Unit Systems. Um, if meters is selected, just drop it down to feet. That way you can work in a system that we're familiar with. All right, so a couple of things here. I'm going to go back to this. <clears throat> um, all right, I'll follow the agenda. I won't jump around too much. So 
scratch what I just said. Um, we will changing it to feed is something that you'll have to do, uh, but we won't move the model around right now. So the next thing we do, we have to make sure that um, our direct link is synchronized. Uh, what that means is we want to make sure that Twin Motion is connected to Revit. That way, if we modify something inside of here, um, that change will occur inside of Twin Motion. So here's a good instance. Let me go to this view here. You'll notice that I don't have a floor. Well, that's because I didn't load my structural model. Did that on purpose so I could show you how to do that. So the structural model is not visible in this view. And that's probably because I have a work set turned off. All right, all my models are loaded. <coughs> there we go, that looks a little better. So it looks like uh, all of the models came in, but if we jump over to Twin Motion, those models haven't came in yet. Which is a couple things we could do. We go to this View tab under Twin Motion, Direct Link, Synchronize. So this was a pretty big change. I'm obviously having like five different models right now. So when I do that, um, it'll take a little bit longer, but if we're just adding or moving a chair around, the direct link synchronize will be super fast. So it's really helpful if you need to make a change in Revit or let's say flip through a design option, let's say. We can make that change and uh, it will update quickly. So now that that is processed through Revit, uh, it is processing through Twin Motion. Alright, now the floor and structure is there. Um, the floor is this transparent color. That's because structure has it set to transparent. We can change that material. But we'll get to that a little bit. Um, now all the models are in there. <clears throat> if we ever need to change them, uh, we can just come into here and make sure that all of our models are visible. The changes that we want are made. And that's how that will go. So the next step is going to be to save the model. Actually, I'll show you how to open the twin or the SketchUp model. Like I said, I'm going to follow this outline pretty strictly. <clears throat> so if we do a SketchUp model, it's actually even easier than Revit. SketchUp and Twin Motion have been playing nicely together for some time now. Inside of Twin Motion, you don't even need Revit open or SketchUp open for that matter if you have your SketchUp model done. I downloaded this guy's model off the internet, so I'm going to load that up and see how it goes. Uh, we're going to go to the Twin Motion at this bottom section over here. Um, there's the import. We're going to hit this button called import. A couple different options that we can do. Direct link, which is that Revit project. Um, geometry, you could import really any geometry and build it onto your project. So let's say we need to do find a specialty bus or a specialty something rather. And we found it on SketchUp Warehouse or BIM object and we wanted to load that in. We can load that individual model in without loading it into our Revit project. So to do that, all you have to do is hit open. We're going to go find this house. Um, here's all the file types. Those file types are listed in the outline. I recommend following the outline. Um, I made it pretty detailed. So we'll go keep hierarchy, same like we did. Essentially, all this means is that when we break down the materials on the right side, they'll keep the same hierarchy as they do natively inside of Revit or SketchUp or whatever model you're importing. This could also work with Rhino models. So hit import. It's going to read some data. Uh, from here, ask you uh, about material conflicts. Uh, I'm going to say, to save some space, we're going to use some material. Okay, so here is the SketchUp project. So I don't know exactly what it's supposed to look like, but I think it looks pretty good. Um, that's how you load in the SketchUp model. If you need to refresh the SketchUp model, you would save, overwrite that SketchUp model, and then all you'd have to do is hit this refresh. The next step is going to be saving the model and collaborating with other people. So Twin Motion, you have to do some special stuff because all the files, um, material files, are going to be local to your machine, which means that you won't be able to collaborate with them natively. You'll have to do something special, and I'll show you how to do that. Essentially, what you'll have to do is run um, it's that step right here. When you save it to the cloud, your material maps won't follow. To collaborate with the coworker, you'll need to run the resource collector command and save those materials onto that same BIM 360 folder. So we're going to be saving all of our Twin Motion files onto the BIM 360 folder, similar like we would a Revit project. Um, it is a little bit easier. Um, 
more like saving just a normal file, you just have to navigate to the Bin 360 folder. That file location is right here at C users, your username, ACC docs, Erdman, and then you find the uh, Revit project. <coughs> All right, my Revit, or not my Revit, my twin motion crashed, so uh, I figured this would be a good opportunity to show you how to open the project if it's already existing. So I just clicked that twin motion direct links, or open in twin motion rather. Um, it opens up direct link. Let's say that we want to do existing project now. I can go click on that existing project. Let's navigate to where we need to go. And that's going to be inside of this PC. We're going to go find Autodesk Docs, Birdman. I already made this project, so I'm going to go to Riverton right here. Under Project Files, Erdman Architecture. We're going to find our Riverton Community Hospital problem. And then just hit Open. All right, whenever you open an existing file and it tells you that you're missing a ton of files, that's because that resource collector that I was talking about in a little bit, um, that didn't work. So we need to go find that resource collector. Um, for this instance, I'm just going to hit Ignore. All right, this looks like an old version of the model. All right, it's back and loaded. Um, it opened up the original model, and then once it opened up the original model, it synchronized um, the new model. So we have that. <clears throat> uh, now I'm going to show you how to save. So in Twin Motion, we're going to go File, Save As, navigate to that project. So, like I said, that's, I'll just walk you through it again. That's this PC. We're going to go to Autodesk Docs. This is working through the Autodesk Connect, Desktop Connector app. Go into Erdman. Uh, we're going to go find your specific project. Uh, project Files, Erdman, Architecture. Throw that thing inside of here, and you're good to go. So the next thing you have to do is do resource collector. Let's say that I'm working with somebody else, and I need them to be inside of the same twin motion model I am and use the same materials that I have. A lot of times, twin motion will just pull materials from Revit, and it won't be totally necessary. But let's say we modify or create a twin motion material. Uh, we need to then essentially send those maps to the cloud, that way people can access them as well. So that's going to be under Edit, Resource Collector. Uh, we're going to use Open for Destination Path. Find that Destination Path, it's going to be right inside of this same folder here um, where Architecture is. That's Erdman, Riverton, Project Files, Erdman, Architecture. Hit OK. Finds that file location. We're going to collect the TM file. We're not going to collect any unused materials, that would be pointless. Unless, of course, you did have like a library of materials that you wanted to use, but rare case. You can also compress files. It takes a little bit longer, but uh, if you have a lot or it's a massive file, it could be worth it. After that, we'll just hit collect. It'll collect some textures. I'll show you where that goes. All right, so urban architecture. Like I said, it goes right into the maps file, um, and this will be where all the maps are, are saving. So you can tell there's a lot of maps in here that are saved. But it doesn't really matter because that space is not being taken up on your computer. It's just in the cloud. So all of those maps are now saving. Whenever somebody opens that up and it says you need to locate missing files, you'll go navigate to that maps folder um, and tell Twinmotion essentially that that's where those files are located. And it will start locating all of those. All right, back to this. And we already talked about refreshing it, so I don't need to go through that again. Um, once the connection is established, like I said, it usually takes two or three minutes. Now, there's a couple of common issues that happen whenever you're doing this uh, that I want to walk you through because I can guarantee it's going to happen to somebody. Uh, let's say that this model, uh, let's say this model here. We move this model here. So remove this model, I don't know, to a, a wrong location, it's not there anymore, or let's say we move this canopy as well. Canopy gets moved, and it's like way up there. So is the furniture. We don't want it up there. Um, sometimes this happens whenever you're syncing. Um, if a file has like 
um, a legacy location, then it will have that same issue. All we want to do, it's a really simple fix, to reset everything in the same location that it should have been in in the first place. We're just going to select this whole model. So this is the scenograph. I haven't got there to the user interface yet. It's something called the scene scenograph. I think that's what they call it. Uh, we're going to click on that Revit model. So you can see that's the Revit model right there. Um, you can tell it's selected because this gimbal will show up. We're going to go right here to our import tab to manage our models. Hit this ellipses. And then we're going to go to reset transformation on selection. So that should reset the transformation on all of the materials or all of the uh, objects that we have inside this model. Yeah, because I'm running <coughs> the screen capture um, the video camera, this is all taking a little bit longer than it normally would. Alright, so all those are now back in the correct location. There and there. Alright. Another thing that might not work, uh, sometimes if you, let's say, shut down Revit but still have Twin Motion open, the direct link connection can break. All we want to do is make sure that direct link connection is secured. Um, what we'll have to do there is, um, if, it's not, if it's not linked or not connected, this will show like a broken chain link. Um, what we have to do is go inside of here, go into InMotion, go direct link synchronize or direct link connections, verify this is connected, and uh, that's all you really have to do. Alright, that takes us to the second section. Join me in the second video for, for uh, more on the user interface.